cuddle? Yeah, I just finished working on my homework for Martha's class. And I feel weird because I was writing about heteronormativity. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. <laughs> I love you a lot. But nothing. It's just, I just, uh, shit. I'm not being very helpful. We're on vacation. I don't want to talk about this right now, but I just, fuck. Hi. Hi. My name is Julia. I'm 24. I'm a nanny. I have a boyfriend and an identity crisis. <laughs> this is my boyfriend, not much taller than me, 28 years old, scraggly hair, scruffy beard, big nose, all black clothes all the time. <laughs> it's the first day of our first ever vacation together. Oh. We're in a fancy hotel room in Portland. I am wrapped in a green and white striped bathrobe worrying about heteronormativity. <laughs> Sometimes I think I have problems. I do want to talk about it. It's just, it's so big, you know? I don't even know where to start. I could start. With this argument we had this morning about the tourist map, it's not what you think about men not asking for directions or whatever. No, it's about this gay bar that the tourist map was advertising as, what the fuck is this? A straight friendly gay bar? <laughs> like, gay bars can't just be safe places for gay people to be gay, they have to pander, pander to straight, straight folks too? Jesus. And maybe you know what his response was. Maybe you're thinking the same thing, because it's not exactly unreasonable, you know, that we should strive for inclusivity. And, you know, straight unfriendly bars might alienate potential allies, and how is that any different from a gay bar, a uh, mainstream bar keeping gay people out because they're gay? It's different, because gay bars are not for you. Their rules are not your rules. Straight people in gay bars are sometimes guests and sometimes invaders, but, and it's fine if a gay bar wants to be straight friendly. It's just, for that to be the selling point, it defeats the whole purpose of it being a gay bar. But we have to check into the hotel, and I have to do my homework, and we can't finish the conversation, and by the time I'm done, I don't really want to talk about it anyway. But. It's not really about that, about sometimes he doesn't get things I think he should because, you know, I signed up for that, didn't I? <laughs> queer woman dating straight man. Oh, by the way, when I say queer, I don't mean, I kissed a girl that I like dear. <laughs> In college just one time. <laughs> when I say queer, I mean, I married my female high school sweetheart when I was 19 years old, the day before Prop 8 passed, and then embarked with her into a polyamorous, a polyamorous triad relationship, during which she and our third partner realized, who was also female, realized they were, in fact, men. After that, collapsed in painfully spectacular fashion, and I stayed with my wife slash surprise husband for another year before I realized I didn't want my boundaries trampled on anymore, and we split up. Bisexual doesn't even cover that shit. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to be all, you know, queerer than thou, <laughs> because everybody's expressions of sexuality are valid. But when I say queer, I mean loving who I want, how I want, and taking down the heteropatriarchy in the process. <laughs> so, obviously, I chose a heterosexual, cisgender... Wait, I'm sorry, do you guys know what cisgender means? Yes. No. Okay. Cisgender, 
It's just a term that means that you were lucky enough to identify with the gender that you were assigned to at birth, as opposed to being transgender. It's sort of a better way of saying, like, it, it sort of avoids people saying, oh, I'm, I'm a real man, or I'm a real woman, you know? Because that's kind of douchey. <laughs> okay? So, like I said, obviously, I chose a heterosexual cisgender man to be my first partner since splitting up with my ex. Whatever, whatever, I love who I want. <laughs> and you know, I'll have you know, he is quite a good catch. He's cute, he's smart, he's very kind, he's a musician, and a beer geek, and I've just gotten him into Doctor Who, <laughs> we're on season three, <laughs> and he loves dogs more than most people, and he laughs like a little kid, and when I told him about how I was a big fat queer, he didn't get intimidated or anything, he just thanked me for being so open. And before you asked, yes, he is good in bed. <laughs> but he also always calls it making love, which I kind of thought was endearingly old-fashioned until I picked it up. <laughs> but anyway, we're in Portland. We're here to have fun. And so along with at least three breweries, we decide to go to a strip club. Specifically, we decided to go to Sassy's because it has no cover, 20 chaps, taps of cheap craft beer, and most importantly, hot girls. Hmm. No, I'm not gonna get jealous of you looking at the girls. Are you gonna get jealous of me looking at the girls? <laughs> <laughs> no? Then stop worrying. We arrive, we get drinks, we sit down, and enjoy. What do you mean that guy over there doesn't believe you did six years of ballet? You're amazing! <laughs> what? Oh yeah, yeah, I've got more singles. You, you need more singles? <laughs> yes! Yes, of course you're allowed to say she's beautiful. She's fucking gorgeous! <laughs> hey! <laughs> My boyfriend thinks you're hot! <laughs> and so do I! <laughs> all in all, it is a fabulous evening in what turns out to be a he delightfully hedonistic romantic getaway. And we're set to go home. About a month previous, in Oakland, at the bar my boyfriend works at, in a beer tasting, I am one of only three women, all of whom are there with their male partners. I know a lot about beer. I mean, I don't pour it for a living, but I drink a fair amount of it, I blog about it, and I have opinions about it. Like, San Diego hop culture frequently sacrifices flavor for bitterness, and Mikel of Mikeller, it's great that he's such a prolific brewer, but he really shouldn't release everything that he brews, because that coffee lambic I had one time is just as disgusting as his milk stout is truly extraordinary. <laughs> but anyway, here, I feel like everybody's looking at me like I'm just the girlfriend. Like, I'm not here for the beer, I'm here because my boyfriend's hosting the tasting and I'm just being a girl, good girlfriend by tagging along. And, what? Yeah, no, I'm, I'm fine. Well. No, I'm not, but can I talk to you about it later? Because it would take too long to explain, and this is really delicious. So I breathe, and I write tasting notes, and I try to ignore the weight of the assumptions around the word girlfriend, or the idea that girls don't like beer, but mostly the word girlfriend, or maybe even the word wife, because I'm sitting across from this beautiful, willowy woman in floral prints whom I happen to know is a young mother and she's really sweet and talking really softly to her husband who's a friend of my boyfriend's and I'm just worrying that everybody in the room is comparing me to her or that maybe she's who I'm supposed to be like now that I'm doing this heterosexuality thing. <laughs> and I 
really wish she wasn't so beautiful. Yeah, no, I, I'm fine. I just, I didn't know those people. And I, I, I don't know, I just felt like they were looking at me just like I was there because of you and not me. And I felt, I, I just wanted to drink beer. And I did drink beer, but it felt, it made me anxious and I don't know what to do about it. Yeah, I mean, no, it's not the same, but thanks for understanding what I'm trying to say. No, I don't want to go home. Thanks for asking, though. I love you, too. You know, I never came out of the closet, because I never really thought of myself as in one. I figured out that I liked girls as much as boys when I was a junior in high school and I fell in love with one of my best friends, but she wasn't interested, so I didn't think it was relevant. But people found out I was queer in my senior year when I started dating my ex, who had a thing for excessive PDA, and as I said, my life only got more outrageous from there. <laughs> Suddenly, being queer was a really visible and public part of myself, rather than something not worth mentioning. And as I grew up and left Orange County and <laughs> became more socially aware, I realized that the personal is political and that visibility matters because it humanizes people, queer people in straight society and it throws a wrench into stereotypes and it offers endless opportunities for education. Like, I never hesitated to explain my marriage or my polyamorous triad or my ex's gender transition to people who were curious. And there were a hell of a lot of people who were curious. <laughs> you know, and sometimes it was dangerous or at least frightening, like, in this English pub, straight pub, uh, where this bloke told me, you know what, if I come in your glasses in the bathroom, I bet you won't be a lesbian anymore. <laughs> but it was important. And if I couldn't avoid it, I was damn well going to own it. So I did. By the time my ex and I split up, I realized, at least because of his gender transition, that I could be with men and still be queer. So when I found myself being attracted almost exclusively to cisgender men, I didn't really think much of it. I didn't have sex with the real penis until I was 23. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> and I liked penis. It was like, it felt good. And I was really fascinated by the way it went from, you know, soft to hard to soft again. Like, I can't fucking do that. <laughs> sex is sex, and love is love. I'm still queer. And I am still queer. I still like girls, even though sometimes there's this little voice inside my head that wonders if my enjoyment of heterosexual sex means that I was deluded that whole time. But that's not part of me I usually lend much credence to. And then, quite by accident, I fell in love with my boyfriend, and he became my boyfriend and I became his girlfriend, and it was all very natural and easy, and it's really nice being with him. We love each other, and respect each other, and have fun together, and support each other, and my visibility is gone. And I'm his girlfriend at a beer tasting, and for the first time in my life, I feel like I'm in the closet. <laughs> like, I have to come out at random moments in totally unrelated conversation just to feel like I'm not betraying someone, myself or the LGBT community at large. Like, 
Did the Giants win yesterday? Yeah? They no. did? No. Oh, no. shit. <laughs> Must be because I like pussy. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to have it both ways. I wanted to be out of the closet as someone who loves and makes love to women, and I wanted to be with my boyfriend, a straight, cisgender man that I love and make love to on a regular basis. And yeah, I wanted to see some tits. <laughs> <laughs> Woo!